Hey, welcome to my devlog. I'm Dustin, and I'm coding a game engine completely from scratch using the Swift programming language. I'm creating a brand new standalone rendering library. I've wanted to separate the renderer from the engine for a while now, and I need to add DirectX to get my games to work on Windows anyway. This package will be open source once it's in a state that can be used to make a whole game. It has a ways to go still, but Patreon supporters can grab a preview of it right now and try it out. Okay, let's check it out. I named this library Universal Graphics. It handles everything related to drawing stuff, as well as the management of operating system windows and related user input. This scene is drawing the hub world from Spyro the Dragon, an instanced animated cube, and an instanced animated morph target. There isn't anything particularly special about what we're drawing here, it's pretty basic stuff. What is special is the code needed to do these things. In Universal Graphics, creating a window that's ready to draw stuff is a single line of code, and it's the exact same line of code for Windows, macOS, and Linux. Universal Graphics supports multiple windows on macOS. It supports multiple windows on Linux. And it supports multiple windows on Windows. I chose to use the native backends on each platform. The backend renderer used is Metal on macOS, OpenGL on Linux, and DirectX 12 on Windows. I chose these backends deliberately. OpenGL is a catch-all for future platform compatibility, Metal guarantees Apple device support, and DirectX adds Xbox as a future platform. Creating assets in Universal Graphics is just as easy as creating Windows. The only thing you need is a URL to the asset you want. Then you just ask the context to create the resource. The assets file types in our example are obj for geometry and png for texture, both of which are included in Universal Graphics. You may also define your own custom asset loader, but that's out of scope for this video. When an asset is created, it is returned to you immediately. The resource is loaded from disk, decompressed, and uploaded to the GPU completely in the background. You're free to use the asset whenever you want, but it won't appear on the screen until its state becomes ready. If you stop referencing a resource, it'll automatically be destroyed. So you can assign them directly to your game objects, and when all of your game objects disappear, so will the resources. The goal of Universal Graphics is simplicity. I wanted to remove all of the heavy lifting and boilerplate you have to write every single time you try to make a game. To achieve this, the library puts performance second. The simplicity is achieved by using fixed function calls to do everything. There are no shaders to mess with. Let's take a look at what it's like to draw something using Universal Graphics. So here we have our little demo. Our demo class conforms to the window delegate protocol. This is where we get all of our callbacks from our window, including this one, which is used to update the window every vsync on each platform. So we're going to need a camera. We need our cube geometry reference. We'll need a material to also store our texture reference. And we'll need a transform so that we can animate the cube. When we initialize our class, we'll create the camera. We'll get a URL to our cube obj file, which is in our assets folder. We'll create our geometry reference, which is going to assign it to our cube up here. And we'll do the same thing with the texture, but with the texture, we're just going to store the texture reference directly in our material as our diffuse color. Then every single time the window calls for a vsync update, we're going to rotate the cube by a small amount based on our delta time change to keep everything nice and smooth. We're going to create a new scene, add our camera to that scene, add our geometry and material and transform all in one call to that scene. Then we're going to add the scene directly to the window's frame buffer and set the frame buffer's background color. And that's it. That's all it takes to draw an animated cube. And if we run it, there it is. Now, you may have noticed something is wrong with our original scene. The cubes look terrible while the background is pretty. If you look closer, you'll notice the cubes are actually pixelated. I'm not using a shader to create a fake pixelated look here. 
the cubes are actually low resolution and the background is actually high resolution. Pulling this off in Universal Graphics is super simple because everything is a render target. A render target is just a texture that you can draw on. Our Windows frame buffer is a render target and we can make our own render target too. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is take our original scene. We're going to need a new variable for our render target which is a render target. We're going to create the render target using our context. We'll just use the shared context. Then when the window draws, what we're going to do is grab the render target and change its size. We're going to set the size to 240 multiplied by the window frame size aspect ratio and we're going to set the height to 240. Now what this will do is make the height of our frame buffer, our render target rather, 240 at all times and then the width will be the same aspect ratio as our window but with the resolution that we want, which is 240. 240 is roughly a PlayStation 1 style pixelated graphics. Now, once we have our render target, we're going to draw our scene into the render target. And we're going to do that the exact same way we do with our window. We just insert it. Once that's done, we're going to draw the render target into our Windows frame buffer. And we do that exactly the same as with the scene. We just insert it. Then if we run it, we have our cube. Now it's lower resolution, but it's blurry. That is because the default sampling is linear. So what we want to do to make it pixelated is add a sample filter and we're going to make it nearest. Now when we run it, the upscaling of our render target will be nearest, which will give us the sharp pixelated look. Now using multiple resolutions at the same time isn't particularly useful if you're only drawing on top of the window. But since our render targets always have a depth buffer, we can actually use that to our advantage. So what we're going to do is create a second transform so that we can draw the same cube twice, but in a different location. And we're going to take our rotation of the cube, duplicate that again, and we're going to rotate it in the opposite direction. And we're going to grab the window frame buffer Mm, and we're going to have to create a second scene first. Dun, dun, dun. So actually what we'll do is we'll separate the drawing of our first scene with a do. Uh, do is, is, is just a do, it's going to do this, but what it's also going to do is give us a scope which will allow us to use the same variable names. So we can just copy this and this will be scene number two um, and we'll insert our transform two. So now we have two scenes. We're gonna draw the first scene into our render target and then we're going to draw the second scene into the window frame buffer. We don't need this. And let's just run that and see what we're doing. So there we have it. We have two cubes being drawn on two different scenes in two different render targets. Now that's not particularly interesting. So what we're going to do is first we're going to drop the resolution of our low res cube way down. Uh, so that it's more apparent that it's super low resolution. 
So the cube on top is about 44 pixels high and the cube behind it is the same resolution as our window. What we're going to do is when we draw the render target into our window, we're going to add an option. And that is going to be depth fail discard. What this is going to do is use the depth texture from both of our uh, render targets, the windows frame buffer and the render target that we created. And it's going to do the exact same type of depth discarding that would be done when we draw our regular 3D geometry. So when we run this, what's going to happen is it's going to draw both of the cubes at different resolutions and clip them. So just for fun, what we're going to do is we will add a second angle to our second cube, just to make things a little bit more interesting. So we're going to rotate it around the up axis and the right axis at the same time. And that gives you a better idea of what the clipping is actually doing. Universal Graphics is a massive project. It's still missing many features necessary to make a full game. In the coming months, I'll be adding skinning, lighting, and user interface and text rendering. At that point, I'll integrate Universal Graphics into my engine, which will allow my games to run on Windows, which is the whole reason I started making Universal Graphics in the first place. If you'd like to mess around with Universal Graphics in its current state, you can head on over to my Patreon, where supporters can download the source code right now. Otherwise, Universal Graphics will be available for free on my GitHub sometime in the future, probably after I've integrated it into my engine. Anyway, that's it for this devlog. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, stay motivated, kill your lifts, and I'll see you next time.